This cast on is worked in three stages. First, we measure a pretty long tail. It should be at least three times as long as the length of the future cast on edge. Then we make a slip knot, place it on a knitting needle and hold this needle in the right hand. Then we place the yarn tail on our left thumb and the working yarn on our left index finger and hold both strands with the rest of the left fingers, just as we do when we use the long tail cast on method. Then we cast on one stitch in exactly the same way as we do with the long tail cast on. We insert the tip of the right needle from the bottom up into the uh, loop that formed at the thumb and then pick the strand that comes from the index finger, pull it through the loop, let go of the loop and tighten the stitch. But then we're gonna do something different. It's not a classic long tail cast on anymore. We take the thumb out of this loop, go around the same strand and pick it up again, but from a different side. And then we insert the tip of the right needle into the loop that is formed at the thumb, but with this time we go from the top down. Then we pick the strand that comes from the index finger, pull it through the loop, let go of the loop and tighten the stitch. Why do we do it? Why do we take this unusual route? Because we need to form horizontal strands at the bottom of every two stitches. These strands will be very important in the last stage of making this cast on. But until now, we still need to cast on more stitches and we do it by alternating the usual long tail cast on and the unusual long tail cast on. And cast on as many stitches as you need for your project. I'm gonna stop at about 10 stitches. Turn your work. The second stage is very simple. We're gonna work in stockinette stitch for two rows. In the first row, we knit all stitches. Simply knit them through the front loop as usual. Turn your work and purl all stitches in the next row. Just plain purling, nothing complicated at all. These two rows will form a gorgeous 3D texture in just a moment when we finish the last stage of making this cast on. If you have an even number of uh, stitches on the needles, then knit the first stitch. If not, then skip this step and go on to the next step. And this step will be very interesting. Before we proceed, let's take a look at the work. So rotate the fabric around the needle so that you could see the wrong side of the work. We are looking for those horizontal strands that we created in the first stage of making this cast on. And these strands are located between the two rows of reverse stockinette and the cast on edge. And you can tell where these strands are first because they are in between the two uh, stockinette stitch rows and the cast on edge. And second, because they are wider than the regular stitch. So you can tell where these horizontal strands are. They're right here. And we'll need these strands to make that 3D texture of the cast on edge. Insert the tip of the right needle under the strand that is underneath the first stitch on the left needle and go in the direction from the cast on edge towards the reverse stockinette stitch rows. And then place the strand on the left needle, like this. Pick the yarn and the yarn stays at the back of the work all, all this time and knit these two strands together, the first stitch on the left needle plus the picked up strand just like this. And then knit one stitch the usual way without any additional strands. And then do it again. Yarn stays at the back of the work. So we go over there, pick up the next strand that is underneath the first stitch on the left needle, place this strand onto the left needle and knit this strand together with the stitch. Just like this and then knit one stitch and keep going until you get to the very end of the row. 
When we get to the last stage, it would be a little bit tricky to pick this horizontal strand because it is not there. This stage was formed by the slip knot, so we didn't get a chance to make that horizontal strand. But to be consistent, to make this tuck that goes to the very end of the row, we'll pick up this side strand and knit it together with the, uh, with the last stage of the row. Just like this. So what do we get after all these steps and stages? We get a lovely cast on that looks like stockinette stitch, but kind of like a puffed up stockinette stitch because it has a gorgeous 3D texture. A nice uh, set of loops underneath the edge, but the most important thing about this cast on, first, it is stretchier than the regular cast on, and second, it keeps the stockinette stitch fabric from curling. Actually, from now on, you can use any stitch pattern you like, but this cast on looks best with the stockinette stitch, just as you see over here. See, it is very consistent. The stockinette stitch pattern kind of seems like it's going on and on, but it is not curling and it also has this lovely ridge at the bottom that is quite neat and lovely. And you can also mix and match patterns to make a border, just like this one. And to see the row for row instructions that explain how to make this border, and to get more details about this cast on method, get the full tutorial at tenroseday.com slash tuck dash cast on. Happy knitting, my friend. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.